The pride movement is a front for Satanism. Um, this is not a derogatory thing that I'm saying. This is not an attack, whatever else. Um, this is truth. I'm going to show you the proof. Let me show you. Here you have Amazon.com. It says, Be Gay, Hail Satan. All right. Okay. Um, oh, it's funny. Very funny. Uh, I don't really consider that to be too, too funny. That's actually a persecution of my beliefs as a Christian. How about this one here? Um, Satanists march in uh, Satanists march in Anchorage Pride Parade chanting Satan made me great hail Satan Satan made me fabulous and whatever else here they're, they're showing hmm Satanists marching there with the pride flag and everything else here you have Fox Rochester a family friendly pride event features unbaptisms by satanic temple drag dance party June the 8th of 2022. Um, these people are against Christians. I consider that to be persecution. Um, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Uh, Aleister Crowley, the very wicked Satanist that he was. There's another quote from him. There is no grace. There is no guilt. This is the law. Do what thou wilt. Isn't that exactly what the sodomite perverts do? It's exactly what they do. Here you have um, the prologue to the Satanic Bible begins by discussing the concept of God's good and evil and human nature. It includes the nine Satanic statements. Number one, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. That's what the pride events are. Number two, Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Again, that's what these people do. I mean, look at all of these. Number three, Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. Number four, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. Number five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. What they're all their hate crime laws and they try to shut people down that oppose them. Number six, Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Number seven, Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who because of the, his divine, spiritual, and intellectual development, has become the most vicious animal of all. Exactly what they do at these pride events. It's just a bunch of animals. That's how they act. Again, this is this is their beliefs. They're putting this stuff out. Satan number eight. Satan represents all of the so-called sins, as they all lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratifications. The Bible calls sodomy a sin. The pride movement says it's not a sin because it follows the satanic Bible. Number nine, Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had as he has kept it in business all these years. Again, a bunch of stupid nonsense. If you know anything about um, Anton LaVey that wrote that garbage or that at least came out and proclaimed to have written it, uh, he actually worked for uh, Pentecostal charismatic church buildings. So he would play the organ, I think it was, or something like that. And um, so he understood what it was like to be an organized religion. And of course, if you understand what the Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, it actually says that Satan's ministers appears the ministers of righteousness. So real true Satanism is in church buildings. Don't ever forget that. Um, but you see these people that are openly Satanists, that are openly into this pride movement. I just showed you the connections. Okay. It's not my opinion. It's not my feelings towards the matter. I'm trying to insult the pride people and the LGBTQ plus A, whatever thing. I'm not trying to just be insulting and a jerk and whatever. The news articles I showed you, they're connecting the two. And this just do what thou wilt. I mean, what is the end of the pride movement? I've asked that question before in another study. The pride people out there, you put on the pride rallies and whatever. Okay, how far do you go before you say, okay, everybody, that's enough? There is no end because it's do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Aleister Crowley. That's what it is. And I'm going to show you now the Bible evidence that ties the pride movement into this whole thing of worshiping Satan. Job chapter 41 in the Old Testament. And again, you know, well, I don't care what the Bible says. Yeah, but I do. You people out there, do you have, can you respect my beliefs as a Christian? Can you, do you believe that I should have free speech? Or is it just for you? We're going to report you to YouTube. Why? Why? I'm not calling for violence. I'm not doing anyth anything of the kind. I'm sharing my beliefs as a Christian. 
Are you so narrow-minded and bigoted that you can't handle me showing what the Bible says about your movement and about your God, Satan? Job chapter 41, verses 1 through 10. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Now, Leviathan in Scripture is given as sort of a dinosaur type of a creature. Dinosaur is a secular creation, but it's you know a dragon, so to speak. But it's also a symbol, you know, symbolically Satan, because he's called the great red dragon in Revelation chapter 12. Oh, those are cookie, but those are my beliefs. Why are you persecuting me for my beliefs? Am I allowed to have these beliefs? See, that's the problem. You want to talk about tolerance and love and we should appreciate other people and anything against it should be hate crime, but then you turn around yourself and try to go and use hate crime against me. doesn't make any sense. I'm showing you what the Bible teaches here. There's Leviathan. That's the context of what we're reading here. Verse 2, Canst thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? You see a lot of these... Uh, People that are into the pride movement, they got things bored through their nose and through their lips and, you know, all kinds of weird piercings and big things through their ears and everything else. They like to bore things through their skin. Why? Because the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your body, when you get saved, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so these people, they want to defile the flesh. God gave me this body, then I'm just going to put all kinds of tattoos all over it and I'll put piercings through it. I'll put something through my nose and I'll put these big things in my ears because they serve their father, the devil. That's why. Verse 3. Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Obviously, the answer is no here. Um, you can't make covenant with these people. You can't have peace with these people. They're militant. They're vile. They want to take over. They want to be able to attack and imprison Christians and probably torture Christians and Lord only knows what. Um, verse 5, Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banner or a banquet of him? Excuse me, shall they part him among the merchants? Interesting little tie in there if you know what biblical merchants are. Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not be cast? Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? <laughs> I thought that was interesting too. Shall not be one be cast down even at the sight of him? I see some of these people that have just completely destroyed their bodies, just horrible things that they've done, and I see them and I just think it's just shocking. And that's exactly what they want. They like to shock straight people. They like to persecute us. They want to defile my little boy's brain. They want him to see their perversion and see their wickedness. And, it, and people that are good are, were cast down at the sight of them, just like their father Satan. Verse 10, None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? I had to put that verse in there just to say, um, don't let these people intimidate you, Christian. They're wrong, and our God is stronger. But look at verse 34, still in context speaking about Leviathan. Job 41, verse 34. He beholdeth all high things. He is king. He is a king over all the children of pride. Oh, that's just a coincidence. It's the pride movement in this verse here. There's no connection. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. I just showed you the proof. These people believe in Satanism. They worship the devil. Psalm 10. That's why he is the king over all the children of pride. They want to please their father, the devil. Sadly, though, uh, what they don't understand is that God hates, or excuse me, that uh, Satan actually hates them. If they don't repent, then God hates them as well. But what I'm saying is. Um, which is a pretty bad spot to be in where the Satan hates you and God hates you as well. That's not a good thing. But uh, Psalm 10, verse 2. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. That's exactly what these pride events are all about. 
The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. <laughs> Some preacher comes out there and says, What you're doing is an abomination. <laughs> puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. We're here, we're queer, and we're not going back into the closet. You ever hear that? We're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. They're chanting as they're going down the street. They think that they'll never be in adversity. Nothing bad will ever happen to them, in other words. Look at verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Watch any of the videos about this stuff. I don't recommend it because it's so vexing. Their mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. They're not good people. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. Uh, funny, because a lot of these perverts and things, they believe in murdering the innocent. You say, what's that? Abortion? Go out there and do all kinds of wicked, vile, sexual perversion, and if you become with child as a woman, well, you just kill it. Murder the innocent. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself and the poor, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. They're atheists, in other words. Now let's go to Psalm 59. Just disgusting to me. The horrible things that these people are doing in the name of freedom and liberty and whatever else. Well, it's our right to go out and live the life we want to live. Yes, it is, but you don't have to push it on other people. I don't care what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Whatever, it's none of my business. But when you come out and you're trying to persecute me because your God is Satan... And you're trying to cover up for being a Satanist by saying, oh, it's pride. Oh, we're just coming out with a little rainbow thing here and whatever else. And see, now they've actually gone beyond this. And now they're saying, we'll have after-school Satan clubs and teach children about Satanism. They're very anxious to get their real agenda through. Psalm 59, verse 1. Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul, the mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without any fault, without my fault, awake to help me, and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of heaven, or the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors, Selah. They return at evening, they make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Interesting too, because they dress up like dogs. Furries, I think they call them or something. Walking around, they got some guy on a leash like a dog or something. <sighs> the Lord has your number. The Bible is a discerner in thoughts of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who, say they, doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and for cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath, consume them, that they may not be, and let them know excuse me, that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. And at evening let them return, and let them make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat, and grudge it, and grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense, and the God of my mercy." If you're a sodomite out there, if you're a pervert of some kind, um, and again, I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm not trying to just attack you for who you are. 
you can change according to the scriptures. But if that's what you are, if you are perverting righteousness and perverting judgment and you're saying, I'm going to serve Satan, you're serving a loser. You really are. I'm going to defile the body that God gave me. Then you'll die earlier. That's foolish. Well, I'm going to be involved in this sodomite relationship. Then you won't be able to have offspring. Naturally. And you'll die out in one generation. Think about it. I'm not your enemy. I'm your friend. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to get you out of that system. You're following Satan. King over all the children of pride. Well, I think we're, you know, let's report this for a hate crime and whatever else. You know what will happen if you do? God's going to remember that. That you worked hard to censor the voice of a preacher. A preacher that actually cares enough to tell you the truth. So, YouTube, you want to take down this video or whatever else? Uh, want to try to persecute me? You'll answer for it. You really will. I'm trying to say the things and share my beliefs as a Christian and say, and, and by the way, let me just say this. Oh, well, people have a right to, to worship Satan. Here in America, we have freedom of religion. I don't believe that way. I don't believe that way. I'd be like saying, you know, hey, I have a right to go out and, and build bombs, you know, and, and things and blow up buildings because those are my beliefs. Uh, no, Satan comes to destroy and kill. There's nothing good about Satan. So why would you allow people to worship Satan freely? And then impose that in a public area. Uh, I don't believe that the founding fathers, I mean, well, I'll say it this way, the, the men that, and women that actually founded this country, the people, not the, the Masonic fathers and things, say it that way, to, just to clarify. Um, those Masonic fathers wouldn't have gotten anywhere if it wasn't for the people that fought the Revolutionary War and the people, the Christians that were actually here. You know, in America, um, the original flag of America was an appeal to heaven. Um, so, uh, I could say a whole lot more on that whole subject, but they didn't have freedom for Satanists. Okay. Satan is, is the opposite of freedom. He's bondage. He's slavery. He'll ruin you. He'll destroy you, get you to destroy your body, defile yourself. So, um, I have no tolerance, zero tolerance for Satanism and zero tolerance for this pride movement. And if America is to be saved, and that's a very big if, um, this pride movement needs to be made illegal. We need to take the rainbow back for what it truly is. It's a sign of God's worldwide judgment. Flooded the whole world because of perversion. And they arrogantly take it and say, there is no God. We can do this thing. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Um, terrible way to look at life. If everybody wants to do whatever they want and that's fine and, and things, uh, then you have chaos. We need the rule of law. And this is the law that we need to rule by. The concepts of scripture, freedom and liberty. That's what we need. So that is going to be it. And uh, thank you out there to those who watch. Thank you for your prayers. Um, I am not going to ever back down from attacking the movements of Satan, no matter what it costs me. So I do need your prayers. And we thank you out there to those who support the ministry as well. That will be it. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.